This video was made possible by EA Game Changers. Battlefield 5 trailer has been finally revealed guys, and we have so much to talk about today, including lots of things I got to see early on. New mechanics, fortification, soldier customization, skins, claws, co-op campaigns, oh my guys, we have so so much to look into today. Oh, and premium has gone as well, how about that? Lots of good changes for the better in my view, much more teamwork needed as well this time around, so looking really good so far. Anyway, hope you guys are all good, this is going to be a long one, so sit back and relax, let's get into this. First things first, this game is set in World War 2, but oh no, this is no ordinary World War 2 game. DICE are going in some very new and interesting directions with this title. There's going to be lots of new features and gameplay mechanics, starting off first with Fortification. Imagine that building you were just in not looking so well. No problem, now you can repair and reinforce. Drop down sandbags, barbed wire, dig a foxhole, even add a stationary machine gun if you want to. If there's an enemy tank coming in, don't worry about it. Add in some tank stoppers as well and prevent them from travelling up the map any further. See a bunch of enemies heading towards you? No problem either. Lay down some sandbags, create a choke point and funnel those enemies into your team's line of sight. Imagine the possibilities people, this is a huge game changer and by the way these are all destructible too so you're not going to have to worry about them too much. You'll need the toolbox to construct whatever you need, don't worry about that either, every class comes equipped with this, no gas masks this time around, but the support class definitely builds the fastest so be sure to have one of those in your squad at all times. Don't worry though, this is not Fortnite. As far as I know, you can only build on and around existing buildings around the map. Let's hope this does encourage players to defend objectives and maintain map control. You'll be fighting in the mountains of Norway, Rotterdam City, North African deserts and along the French countryside across a variety of maps varying in tempo. So don't be expecting each map to play quite the same. With improved physics, the world around you will feel more believable, and you'll need to be more active in your gameplay. Think about this, if you jump over a ledge, you gotta time the jump right. Don't time it right, and well, it's gonna cost you in more ways than one. Players act and react in a more natural way, that is to say, they are more readable, relatable, and understandable. Run through water and your player will bring their knees up, run into a wall and your character will slam into it. You'll slip in mud as well and stumble up hills. Don't worry, you won't see this in first person, but your opponents will. Make sure you don't stumble into a painting, your opponents may hear it fall. Sliding in BF1 was a pretty cool addition, but in this game you can slide on the ground to the side, throw yourself on your back, turn 360 degrees while down too. And while doing those actions you can still aim your gun and shoot. That's pretty cool. So it doesn't matter if you're vaulting over an object or jumping through a window, as long as you're facing forward you can shoot. However you'll be restricted from the apex and down and your aim will be all over the place but you can still shoot. So as you move around the map you're not going to get caught out vaulting, you'll still have a chance to take out your opponents. So that's a nice little addition, really glad DICE put those in. Head glitching it seems may be a little less effective in places as you'll be needing to be very careful in grassy areas. Now it moves and it will give your position away. Keep that in mind before you camp and snipe at the back of the map. As for destruction, like before, part of the building will remain, but now we have the addition of walls cracking and then the debris will fall. So there's going to be real physics based on the trajectories and it's never going to be quite the same each time. Pieces will hang and slowly detach, so keep your eyes open as you make your way through buildings. Oh and yes, you will be affected by shockwaves too. That looks pretty crazy. That's the V1 flying bomb by the way. Bring up your binoculars and you'll be able to call one in. Well, we'll talk about that later and provide you with more details about that. In this one you can throw back grenades and shoot out them too. Let's hope we can shoot down that rocket as well. 
bullet penetration is also back. Shoot through walls as much as you like, follow those damage indicators and take out those pesky campers. Do be careful if you are hiding away. Be very wary of the material around you. I hear wood isn't very effective at stopping those bullets. Unfortunately, I don't have the image at hand, but I did notice a pair of skis, so expect ski warfare at some point later down the line. Thankfully, spotting has been completely revamped, so don't expect to spam that spot button anymore and snipe Doritos across the map. You will need to be more active in your gameplay and you will need to scan the environment ahead of you. Gotta be honest, that is a very much needed change in my opinion. Not a big fan of those Doritos, especially 3D spotting. Definitely not a fan of that. You'll need to be mindful of resources as you move around the battlefield. You won't start off with a huge amount, so be sure to plan your moves wisely. Do bring a support player with you. You can nab ammo off dead enemies of course, but it won't be much. Gunplay is quite different this time around. It's all about predictable bursts and patterns with this game. Aim and shoot, that's where the bullet goes. First bullets are apparently basically the same each time. No idea how much spread there will be. Regardless though, you'll be able to tame your weapon through skill. This time around, each gun plays very differently. Entry level weapons will be much easier to use and more difficult weapons will have bonus stats, like increased damage for example. But they may also have trade-offs. Go easy and predictable or risk it and potentially do more damage. The choice is yours. Oh, and there's less ammo as well, so be sure to get a support in your squad. Now, check out this cool feature. If you notice a downed teammate ahead of you, no problem. Just drag their body to safety and you can revive them from there. Syringe when you can, no problem if you get interrupted either. No longer will you get stuck in an animation, so you can just cancel, take out your opponents and revive your friends later. Not a medic, no problem either. Anybody in a squad can revive other squad members regardless of their class. How amazing is that? That's pretty cool. The medic, however, revives much quicker and to full health too, so you better make sure to have one in your squad at all times. Assault, Medic, Support and Scout all return but with a difference. Now there's Soldier Archetypes, which include clearer gameplay roles focused around playstyles and specialisations. You've got your base archetypes and then there's going to be more specialised roles. They'll include unique gadgets, gameplay elements, think specialised, very specialised. Now you need to choose wisely here, your soldier stats, agility, flak armour, suppressive resistance and health regen all vary on each class and archetype. It's an interesting way to add variation in the gameplay there, I'm really looking forward to that. Also, archetypes will have their own special missions to unlock extra content. From what we know so far, Assault comes with suppressed SMGs, suppressed handguns, grenade gun smoke, the flare gun, oh, and throwing knives as well. Yep, that's right, the throwing knives from Hardline are coming back. Now, I'm not too good on the pronunciation here. Improved Garrett Spotting 2, which can only mean improved detection of stealthy player takedowns, right? That's surely what it's gotta be. Apologies for the pronunciation there. Now, you'll need to choose your class very wisely as you'll need to be mindful of resources. You can loot enemies and there will be resupply stations on every flag. These are buildable by every player and they can be destroyed by every player as well. There is also a new addition, the squad reinforcement ability. You'll be able to accumulate points through squad actions and playing the objective. Get enough points and you'll be able to call in powerful vehicles, maybe even a V1 flying bomb or JB2, depending on which faction you're on. These are pretty expensive items, so don't be expecting to see many of them. Maybe you'll see one towards the end of a round. Supply drops, smoke screen, barrage, and even heavy weapon pickups feature as well. Totally got the pronunciation wrong there, I'm sure, but we're gonna carry on. There is no hero kits, but there will be basically powerful weapons like we saw back in Battlefield 4. No change of class if you do pick them up, but if you run out of ammo or die, it's gone. That's it, it's over. They're also adding towing to the game as well. You can hook up trailers, go on drive-bys, whatever you need, just take it with you. 
tired of those planes dominating a certain part of the map, no problem. Take an AA gun with you and get rid of them. Mobile fortresses, basically. Think of the possibilities. So, so good. So, so good. So much potential. Really looking forward to that. Oh, and when you die, you'll see a quick kill cam in slow motion. Not through your opponent's view, but in third person. That's a really nice touch. So you'll see who shot you and where they were, but not their current location. Next, you'll see teammates in third person. You'll be able to cycle through whomever you want to spawn on and drop back into the action. Last one alive, oh dear. You'll see a last surviving squad member message pop up. If you die, you'll be back to the deploy screen like we see in BF1. I like that, it adds a little fog of war. You won't see the entire map unless your squad is taken out and you won't see your opponent's exact position either. I like that, it adds a little fog of war. You won't see the entire map unless your squad is taken out and you won't see your opponent's exact position either. So you're gonna have to be very much thinking about where you're going and thinking about your teamwork in regards to that. I like that, it adds a little fog of war, you won't see the entire map unless your squad is taken out, and you won't see your opponent's exact position either. Oh and you'll be hearing brutal screams right before your death. They are pretty nasty, just wait till you hear those guys, they're pretty brutal let me tell you. Customization in this game is way more than the previous one. You can customize sights, stocks, bipods, bayonets, all progression these are, so you'll have to progress and upgrade these as you go along and unlock them, of course. You can change your gender, face, helmet, war paint on your face, upper body, pants, claws, yes, claws. Do you see that in the trailer? That is a claw, all customizable. So you'll be able to show off your epic items. Legendaries are returning too, and uh, yeah, let's hope there is some more included than we saw in Battlefield 1. Little lacking in my opinion that game. Customization is back for vehicles too with much more focus on specialization. You'll need to decide what you want to unlock next and progress that way. Different vehicles for different factions, asymmetrical like Bad Company 2. So you won't be seeing the same vehicle on either team. You can customize vehicle looks, paint jobs, skins, add sandbags, add protective shields on treads too if you like. There are trade-offs though. Not sure of the full details here, but maybe expect speed reduction, damage reduction, that kind of thing. Towing looks pretty awesome, oh my god. It allows you to combine and extend your roles. So solo vehicles may be powerful, but think about this, a tank with an AA gun on the back. Imagine that. Yeah, you ain't surviving those planes. No way planes, you're going down. You're just not gonna survive against those. So you gotta be on the watch out for these kinds of combinations as you move around the battlefield. If you're not focusing on these, you're gonna really suffer. Your team's gonna suffer, so do be sure to look out for those. Now, physical differences do matter when it comes to vehicles and will play very differently. More on that in future videos. Now, as for game modes, the usual Conquest, Domination and Team Deathmatch return. New mode Grand Operations features historically inspired battles. We've been told there will be less of getting stuck and more moving forward. Let's hope so. Getting stuck on Monte Grappa really did suck in BF1. Not looking forward to any more of that. These grand operations work a little differently to the operations mode you've seen in BF1. They do take place over four days. That's not four consecutive calendar days, nope. That's just four matches, one after the other, and the mode changing on each one. Day one could be breakthrough, for example. That's the standard operations mode. The next one could be front lines or even conquest assault. Not sure if there's gonna be any more modes, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. In one example, you may find airborne mode on day one. You'll need to parachute in off a plane and need to destroy enemy artillery to advance. It's not just one operations after the other though. Your actions will have a direct impact on the game and the narrative. For example, if you only manage to destroy one of four artillery stations, that's gonna be less respawns, maybe even less vehicles on the next go. Now here's something cool. If there's no clear winner on day three, on day four, it becomes final stand. That's right, last man standing. Yep, you heard that right. Good luck, good luck is all I'm saying. I am so looking forward to that. There's gonna be some really nice clutch situations definitely looking forward to seeing some top plays from you guys i know you can pull it off i know someone's gonna drop something sick on that so really looking forward to that 
Now, as far as I'm aware, the same map is played on day one and two, and there will be a new map for the following days. So two maps in total from what we know so far. We may not just see reduced tickets and vehicles though. Dynamic weather has been confirmed to return. So be prepared for that. Expect sandstorms, that's my guess. Oh, and lastly, what about that premium? Where has it gone? Well, that is being replaced by the Tides of War live service. Instead of the usual premium calendar, you and your company will be taken on a grand journey through World War II, beginning with the fall of Europe and into mankind's greatest conflict. No premium pass, no segmentation of the community, the experience will expand over time, evolve, and gameplay features forever changing. Sounds pretty damn good if you ask me. But what about that battle royale? Well, we don't know yet. There could be a mode, we don't know. Will it be tested in this live service? Maybe, we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, I'm pretty happy with this evolving narrative, the new content, and the new gameplay potential that this Tides of War live service will surely provide. Should you wish to customize your characters further, there will be a vanity system in place, allowing you to purchase various items should you wish. Good news, these items can also be earned by playing the game. So there's not gonna be any pay to gain unfair advantage here, and nothing will matter more than skill. I do like the idea of this company, kind of like letting people know who you are. A signature if you like. Get a whole bunch of friends together, mix and match your outfits, lots of potential here. Just think about that one guys. Oh and the company thing I should mention, what is it? Well that's for you to decide. Here you'll be able to customize your own company of soldiers and vehicles and they evolve as you get better at the game and progress. Included here is player progression, soldier progression, weapons, vehicles, and chapter progression as well. It's all there, loads of customization, loads of progression, so be expecting big things from that. Oh, and there is also co-op campaign missions too. This is called Combined Arms. You can squad up with free friends and fight enemy AI. Here you can also earn customization items for use in multiplayer as well, and this mode will also feature special hardcore challenges to test your skills. Do take it easy though. If your squad fails to extract from the map, say goodbye to a big chunk of XP you just earned. No idea how long these matches will be, but you may want to play it safe, just in case you lose all that XP. Don't worry, single player has not been discarded. War Stories is back across the globe once again. Unexpected fronts they say, let's hope so. War Stories in my opinion was a little short last time around. It was awesome though, don't get me wrong, it was beautifully made, just a little short. So please be longer this time. Not much further details to add here I'm afraid. But we do know you experience the freezing Norwegian landscapes as a young Norwegian resistance fighter and also the intense desert heat of North Africa. So stay tuned for more on that. Lastly, expect paratroopers early on in the calendar. Timed events, dog tags and emblems will be available for those who participate, including new customization options. Lots of other things to talk about and I'm sure I've missed so many things. Ticket bleed rate, flag count rate, all server side this time, allowing for ease tweaking, as far as I'm aware at least. Lastly, a couple of things to end this video. You'll automatically join a squad upon joining a game. That's pretty cool. XP boosts are going to return. Well, boosts return, so probably going to expect XP boosts as well. Daily orders return. Those are short, focused activities. And there will be special assignments for you to equip as well, which will include one to four challenges each. And that is all the information I have, guys. Looking very promising indeed. I wish I could have shown you much, much more, but I can't, I'm sorry. Oh well, maybe next time. Anyway, please drop a like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more Battlefield 5, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you later.